Hey, stunning people. My name is Bean, and welcome to the Salt Lake Sessions. Today's artist is from Nairobi, Kenya. He found a sense of self walking dogs in Boston, and now he has big dreams in Los Angeles. I am very excited for you to meet Jason Sibi Okumu. Hi, Jason. Hey, Bean. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, man. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah. Really, it is my pleasure. Yeah. It is a joy to get to hear you do what Thank you, you do. Thank you so much. It's refreshing. Thank it you. is. Yeah. When you sing, it feels human. And it mm. makes me feel more human. And just kind of like I'm connecting to this just kind of very <laughs> raw and organic experience. And so I appreciate you bringing that to Thank the table. You. And thanks for saying that. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's a struggle to be human. Right? <laughs> and to like uh, settle into your humanity. Mm-hmm. Or display it. Mm -hmm. And so for you to like say that you appreciate my display of my humanity is, is very, very cool. Thank mm -hmm. you. Do you feel free when you sing? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I feel the freest. 
Um, actually, no, I feel the freest when I write music. Mm. Um, but it's it's very close. It's kind of hard to like. They compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> they're like right there with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what? A, very free. Tell me about that freedom when you write. The freedom when I write is just. Uh, it allows me to just express myself to the fullest capacity that I'm able. Mm. Um, and I have a difficult time, uh, like, like typically bringing my full self into rooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, partly because I, sometimes I don't understand what that is. And also because um, I sometimes feel like it might not be appreciated or uh, received in, in a great way. Mm. But when I write music, everything is okay. If I'm angry, I can say it. If I'm sad, I can say it. If I'm really happy, if I'm in love, if I'm scared to de- declare that I'm in love, mm-hmm. it's all it's all okay in mm-hmm. songwriting. So I think that's where the freedom comes from and the safety. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because I feel like the way that you sing and perform music mm. is pulled from that same sense of I'm just here and it's effortless mm. and it's coming from little soul that exists in my belly button, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it really is great. So I appreciate Thank your energy you. and I appreciate what you bring to the table. Thank you so much, man. Where are you from, Jason? I'm from Kenya. From Kenya? Yeah. What, how did you make your way to LA? Uh, by way of Boston. By so I Boston. first left Nairobi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nairobi to Boston. Uh, got to study at Berkeley, which mm-hmm. is wonderful. Mm-hmm. And then, um, like, I was just kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. um, where I wanted to be. At the time, it was also confusing Mm -hmm. and my brother actually was like I want to go to Los Angeles and I want to uh because he was pursuing like film scoring and composition and for him this felt like the place he needed to be Mm -hmm. and because he sort of made that call I was like I'll follow you Mm -hmm. and so then I ended up coming here and it's been the best decision of my life do you live with your brother here no he moved back to Kenya Mm -hmm. he's not it's a story he's now in (laughs) Bulgaria with his wife which is wonderful (laughs) but um he moved back to Kenya during the pandemic Mm -hmm. And um, but we lived together for about a year mm. before we moved back. Was yeah. your brother living in Boston as well? He was. Yeah. yeah. So he also went to Berkeley and yeah, we okay. Got to be there. Uh, he's younger than me, but we overlapped for the last two years. You had each other there. Yeah, it was great. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you found strength in having your brother there, or was there yeah, like a, sure. a safety net to the family being there? Oh man, I found a lot of strength. Um, I mean, like Kenya to Boston is a long way away. Right, and even it's though like I ha- was able to find sort of friendships in Boston, I think having somebody who understood where I came from, mm-hmm. uh, both like in the country, but also just like as a family, family person, understood um, th- that aspect of my life was really grounding. Mm-hmm. And I think we were able to just kind of look at each other at times and be like, "It's okay, mm. you're okay. It's just no. It's <laughs> you know, what I mean? like." <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. We are okay. It's just no. Um, it's just no. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, they do so. have coats. We do have coats. And that is yeah. like, I guess, a little bit of solace. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But I'll say as somebody who is from the Northeast, the yeah. snow always sucks. Yeah. So. Yeah. The first right. snow is beautiful. Right. First time it first falls, one. it's amazing. Yeah. And then you get to February and you're like, well. When you were done with school in Boston, mm-hmm. you stayed there for a couple of years, yes, right? I what did. did you do when you were there? I walked dogs. <laughs> Tell I me about that. Dogs. Um, man, it was such a great experience. And so my friend was walking dogs before me, and then he sort of left. He moved to Nashville, and he's like, "Hey, would you like this job?" Uh, he did warn me that it's kind of grueling because you sort of get up early. Uh, you're walking from like eight to four with like maybe the only break you have is when you're walking from like one house to the other house, mm-hmm. and sometimes you have like five or six dogs, and it's just a whole thing. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I walked pretty much every day. Um, for almost three years. That's why you're like, so just <laughs> So you said cardio God. One of the reasons. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was so good. It was really, really um, therapeutic. Mm. I spent a lot of time like with no sort of human contact and um, just listening to myself. Mm. Like I started delving a lot into podcasts on like mindfulness and breathing and mm. meditation and all that stuff that has now become a foundation of my life was born from just getting up and moving with these beautiful dogs. What are some of your big takeaways from that time? Um, patience. Mm. Um, discipline, mm. uh, which I used to hate. I used to hate the, the concept of discipline. Mm. Um, what about it? It felt very limiting to me. Mm. Um, it felt like, 
like also imposing. Like I had to do these things every day or I would not succeed kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I always rail against like boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, but like when I was able to reframe that as like discipline, as like a practice of self-love, mm-hmm. you know, because like um, the approach that you take to yourself and like loving yourself and nurturing yourself and also in the case of walking dogs, like taking care of these animals who are like relying on you for their well-being. Mm. There's a discipline that comes from just wanting to show up as your best self Mm. for the people, places, things in your life. Mm -hmm. And that reframing of the concept of discipline um, was just a major takeaway from that time. Mm. And how have you carried that into the artistry? Um, these are great questions, man. I, I don't think I've ever spoken about like mm-hmm. that part of my life. Well, you're easy to talk like this. About. Thank you, man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think in my creative life, especially, it's just making sure that I I show up for myself consistently um, to a level of which I can be proud. Like when I go, when I fall asleep at night, and I sort of scan my day, mm-hmm. and I look back at the choices, can I be like at peace with those choices? And it's helped me be able to, like, stay the course. Because mm-hmm. I think, um, I'm sure you'd relate to this, like, you have a lot of goals that sometimes seem really, really far away. Mm. And if you are sort of just fixated on that and where you are, you're like, man, what am I doing here, you know? Like, mm. why am I... You can feel like that. I'm projecting you say, my... Would you say you're sure I relate to that? <laughs> you said you would know. You know, goals that are just so far away. I'm, I'm, t- <laughs> I'm completely projecting <laughs> my No, it's, I totally relate um, to that. Absolutely, I relate to that. Yeah. So I, I think when discipline comes in and you have um, things that you can kind of check off for yourself that are, you know, like, did you eat well today? Mm-hmm. Did you sleep well today? Did mm-hmm. you go outside? And if you can do that to, today and tomorrow and the next day, it just builds a foundation. At least in my mind, like, I feel like when I re- get to where I want to get to, first of all, it, w- it wouldn't feel like overwhelming. But second of all, I'll be able to enjoy it because I've been enjoying every single day since. Mm. You know, instead of waiting to enjoy mm-hmm. when I get there. You almost yeah. give, it is a, it's Grammy week here. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of uh, just the industry buzz, mm-hmm. industry schmooze, mm-hmm. bump elbows, mm-hmm. la 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 yeah. la, be this, do this, yeah. you know, present yourself. Yeah. And the way that you carry yourself, to me, mm-hmm. almost feels... I don't want to say anti-establishment, mm. but I feel like you taking care of yourself is kind of like a some form of revolution against huh. just like cool. the institution that's in place a little mm. bit. I think that you're showing up and not expecting yourself to be a type of way, and mm. I don't think you're expecting things from others either. Yeah, which is just well, very refreshing. Man, well, thank you. I think you mm. caught me on a good day too. Like, <laughs> yeah, there are days where I'm really like not at all, um, like sort of. I, I have the theory of it, but not able to practice mm. what I'm what I'm saying. Um, but I think more than like railing against or, or having a revolution against society as a whole, I'm mm. sort of trying to do that with me, and in a sense, like go to war with my insecurities mm. and my uh, anxieties, or just at least look at them mm. and and like examine them as to whether they hold true. And because a lot of I spend a lot of my life like looking for validation and. Um, feeling very, very uh, just just mean to myself, mm. just not treating myself very well. Mm-hmm. And it's very, I'd say like in the last year, maybe a year and a half, that I've started to build these habits that are like less theoretical and more practical. Mm. Um, and it's helping me like, I like your word revolutionize. Like it's like just the way that I move around the world. Mm. Yeah. So with all the things that you've been building, the discipline you've had, mm-hmm. how is that carrying you into the future and the next steps and who you want to be? Oh, man. As an artist. As an artist. As an artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, ho- I hope that it is like allowing me to write music that other people can just connect to mm-hmm. and um, like uh, sort of lose themselves in, in a way. Mm-hmm. I, I really hope that that is what's coming out. Um, but also more tangibly, like you mentioned Grammy week, it's been a big goal of mine for a long time to, to be on that stage and like have sort of that level of recognition of the work that I put out, Mm -hmm. um, uh, which is both like validating to me, but it also means that I've touched a lot of people, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so like thinking further ahead, like I'd love to get to a point where I'm, I'm also 
in the conversation for awards like the Grammys. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm opening up or headlining Madison Square Garden. I would love to do that. I have yeah. a goal for three years. Three years? Three years from okay. now. I have this plan called Road to Madison. Road to Madison. Road to Madison. We're manifesting. And we're manifesting. Manifesting right now. Madison. And I feel like yeah. if I, if I, if I uh, both the both the place and the girl, <laughs> 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 we, we'll take both. Um, I like that. I like but, that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I feel like if I say it out loud, maybe you know yeah. someone something will hear me. But like totally. Um, yeah, just having that concept of Road to Madison and like. Who would I have to become in order to be headlining Madison Square Garden? Mm. Like, wh- what are the traits of the person who who is doing that? Mm. Um, and every day, it's like I can kind of look at, even though I'm not there yet, I can kind of look at where I am and be like, oh yeah, that's that's in line with that. That's mm. not right. And yeah, kind of evolve into that. And evolve into it. Yeah. Mm. I love that. Yeah. I think that the pursuit of betterment is good for everyone. You know. Yeah. I'm here for, here for it. Here for it. What do we have to look forward to? Do you have any projects coming up? Any um, tours? Any shows? Yes, I have no set dates for releases, but I'm working on this record. It's actually going to be on this completion. It's going to be a five uh, album project, right? And it's called Parables, and it basically tells a story of me from like severe depression to uh, sort of finding the love of my life. Yeah. And then Madison. it ends, Madison, <laughs> and it ends uh, on Parables of Us. Mm. So it starts from Parables of Hope all the way to Parables of Us. Wow. And Parables of Us is like when we finally sort of get together. And so I'm, I'm working on that and I finished Parables of Hope. So I'm going to start releasing uh, songs from that record this mm-hmm. year. Could I hear one of the songs now? Yeah, absolutely. Can. Which one are you going to do? Um, I'm going to play Don Miguel Ruiz. Don Miguel Ruiz, Ruiz. is a song. Ruiz, exactly. Ruiz. It's a song about a book called The Four Agreements. Um, which has been such an important book in my life. Mm. Um, it basically speaks to the idea that, like, uh, in our lives, we make agreements with ourselves. We kind of play out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes those agreements are really beneficial. You know, sometimes they're not. And this, Like, if you make an agreement with yourself, for example, like, that I'm an unworthy person, mm. right? And you shake hands on that. Then uh, as you move through life, you sort of encounter people, places, things, and, and like it's the circumstances that confirm to you the agreement that you made with yourself. Mm. I feel like a sponge. I'm just like soaking up Jason right now. So you, I'm man. into it. I'm really Thank glad you. that you're here. Thank you. And I'm really excited to see where you go. Me too. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me and making this such like an easy, uh, fun experience. You make really it easy. Appreciate it. And we can do this one too. And we can end with the <laughs> She said, hey, this book I'm reading 
It's called the Four Agreements It's by Don Miguel Ruiz And it could really change your life I don't mean to turn your feelings Into words that I believe in I just know that it's done miracles for me And I said, oh, don't you worry It was good to share my story It's not every day you meet someone so generous and kind I'll give the book a read and best of luck for when you leave Here's two more afternoons like these And giving happiness a try Hey Stunning People, it's Bean. Make sure to check out the Salt Lake Sessions YouTube channel and subscribe.